So hello everyone, welcome back on another video on digital signal processor. In the last video, we have implemented the serial communication interface using calling method. In this video, we are going to implement the serial communication interface using interrupt method. And the processor which we are using that is Launchpad 28379D. And this code is implement this code is applicable to all the C2000 microcontrollers. The rest of the thing uh, will be remain the same other than GPIO configurations. So if you haven't subscribed my channel, please go and subscribe the channel for the latest update. So to start the video, we have to create a new project and to create a new project you can check my previous videos and link link in the description box so we have added all the necessary files we have included all the necessary files to the projects that is required to successfully completion of this project and the buffer size we have used the 256 and we have defined the buffer size at 256 so for the serial communication interface we have to initialize the gpio general purpose input output pin and where the one pin will be as a transmitting and another pin will be for the receiving because the UART and serial communication interface is the two wire communications so the first thing what we will do we will just initialize the GPIO pins that is UART pin configurations and here you can see that uh, we have initialized the pin number 18 and the pin number 19 as a serial communication interface and that can be done with the help of gpa max dot bit dot gpio 18 equals to 1 that is equals to 2 and uh, that is gpio 19 equals to 2 so that will be configuring the gpio pins as the serial communication interface that is module b scib and uh, where the directions of the 18 pin will be the output that means the gpio 18s will be using as a transmitting pin and the directions of the GPIO 19 is 0 that means that 19 pin will be configured as the input pin and uh, the pull up register we have make it set for 18 and 19 pin so the next thing is we have to initialize the serial communication interface so to initialize the serial communication interface we have to initialize the software set to 0 now we can do the communication control register set like the configurations of the serial communication interface. The configuration includes the board write, data line, stop bits, and parity bits. And that can be done with the help of SCI set config functions. And this function will select the board write, that is 9600, which we have considered in this project. And the data length is the 8, its configuration stop bit is 1, and the parity bit is none and the device clock frequency is that is uh, 50 megahertz for this launch pad and the module which we have used the serial module b so it is having the four serial modules module a b c and d to which we have used that is module b and once we have set the baud rate data length stop bit and parity bit now we can enable the receiving and transmission pins so to enable the receiving and transmitting pins uh, and to be how to enable the RX and TX registers and that comes under these control register 1 so we have to enable RX enable that is equals to 1 so in this case what can we do we can take the data receiving data is enabled and uh, in TX enable we can transmit the data over the GPIO pins in the last video if you have seen that we haven't included these three lines and we have completed the serial communications module with uh, these five lines excluding these three lines so to work the serial communication module as an interrupt we have to initialize the interrupts so the cause of the interrupt could be that rx break interrupt enable whenever the receive buffer is having the data it should be generate an interrupts in that case the rx ready bit will be high so in that case it will be generating the interrupts and and when the data is having the breaking so in that case also it, it should 
it should go into the interrupt module and whatever task is done it will complete the interrupts and come back to the exact locations where it left. The another registers which we have to include for the interrupt that is TX interrupt enable that is a transmission interrupt enable that net to set to 1 because we can transmit the data using the interrupt driven method and there could be the another cause of interrupt that is we are enabling that is rx error interrupt enable that is set to 1 so whenever the interrupt is coming due to the receiving break detections it will generate the interrupts and uh, it will go to the rx isr and it will perform the task so these three lines we have to include whenever we want to work with the interrupt one methods and uh, this will be up, after initializing everything we have to make the software set to 1 so it will make the serial communication interface out of the reset so once we have defined the serial communication interface we have to define it as a globally so to define the globally we have to we have created the uart pin initializations and the serial communication pin initializations so where to use these two pins so these two these two line these two code of lines we have to use in the uh, main program and while writing the main program before calling these two functions the main program we have to initialize more things so what thing what other things we have to initialize for the c2000 microcontrollers so we have to initialize the device whenever we are initializing the device it will initialize the system clock and all the peripherals and we have to initialize the gpio pins and after that we have to disable all the pandering interrupts so now after that we can call the uart pin initialization so it will do the gpio configurations for the serial communication and after that we have, we have to initialize the serial communication initializations so once we have done this we can we have to initialize the interrupt module and in the interrupt module we have to initialize the vector table so to initialize this one we have to write the interrupt module initializations and we have to initialization of the interrupt vector table so in the interrupt vector table after that we have to initialize the pi control registers and the pi vector table so these three things these things also we have to initialize when we are working with the interrupt mode interrupt mode so in the last video also if you seen that we have initialized all this thing because we have used the timer as interrupts so here we are using the serial communications receiving and transmitting data over the interrupt so that is why we are initializing the pi vector table and a pi control registers so now what work we have to do whenever the interrupt is coming so and that is coming under the pi vector table dot scib rx interrupts and whenever the interrupt is coming for the receiving data where it should go it should go to sci rx isr and uh, this is the for transmitting interrupt and whenever whenever the controller is transmitting the data over the serial pin where it should go it should go to sci tx isr so we have to write the code on the receiving isr and the serial transmitting isr so what should we write on the receiving isr and uh, transmitting isr so we have to return the functions that is interrupt that is interrupt white sci rx isr and the return type is the white so here you can see that we are looking about the interrupts and uh, whenever it is coming to the interrupt what is happening behind it so whenever when it handles the interrupts so it will come to the interrupt when rx rdy pin that is rx rdy pin that flag set to high whenever this flag set to high it will comes to the rx isr and uh, in the rx isr it will read the data and after completion of the reading the data it will clear the it will acknowledge the pi vector pi control registers so this code we have explained nicely in the previous video that this code will be remain the same and uh, we have to return the rx isr 
and uh, we have to acknowledge it so what happened if you are not giving acknowledge when you are not providing the acknowledge it will be halted at that locations and it will not receive the another set of data so make sure you have to acknowledge after reading all the all the characters whenever it is coming into the isr and after completion of the isr you have to acknowledge the pi control register so the prototype for the rx is here we have written the interrupt provide sci rx isr and that is defined globally so the next function if you see that that is a transmitting isr so in the transmitting isr so whenever it is coming to the transmitting isr we have to acknowledge it so whenever you if you haven't done acknowledgement what it happens it would happens that it cannot send the data again and it cannot receive the data again whenever you are not doing the acknowledgement during transmission process whenever your data has been transmitted you must acknowledge the your pi control registers once we have initialized the sci rx isr and tx isr and that we have to include in e allow and eligible because the pi control registers are the protected set of registers so to enter into the pi control registers we have to allow the path and once we have completed the initialization we have to disable it so for the cpu timer we have to initialize the cpu timer and the configuration of the cpu timer is 200 mic mega is the frequency and uh, this is one second that is uh, this is in the microsecond so that will be approximately one second and uh, it is going to the cpu timer zero isr this configuration uh, means that every one second our code will go to the cpu timer isr and uh, whatever task is that will complete it so what is then the cpu timer isr so in a CPU timer ISR, we are increasing the interrupt count. So every one second, this counter will be increasing. And once we have done the task, we have to acknowledge it. So make sure for interrupt, you have to acknowledge whenever you are going into the ISR. So once this is done, we can control the timer control register that is 0x4000. And now, the thing is in a pi vector table if you're looking at a pi vector table so what is the location of the timer zero and what is the location of the scib rx and what is the location of the scib tx so we will go to the timer zero b module receiving pin and b module transmitting pins so this is the pi vector table you can see that here the timer 0 comes under the group 1 and 1.7 so if you look it at group 1.7 and we have to make it 1 because we are using the timer 0 ISR and if you are looking the serial communication interface B module so it is coming under the module 9 and 0.3 for receiving pins so you can see that for 9.3 equals to 1 we have to enable it and it is 9.4 for the transmitting pins so it will be 9.4 equals to 1 for the transmitting pins this is the IER and again we have to enable it IER equals to uh, MINT because that is related to Ninth group, so it is related all related to nine group, so it will be all operations. So, here for this is for the timer, and this is for the serial communication interface. And after initializing everything, we have to enable the interrupts and the global interrupts. Now, what we will do, we will run this code using the launch pad and we will show how whether it is able to transfer the data or not. So, for that, we will build the project. So it is building the project and uh, so build has been finished. Now we will debug it. So if you are working the first time, it will the one pop-up window will come appears and it will ask in which CPU you want to build it. So you have to choose the CPU one, or you can choose the both the CPUs if you want if you want to work on the core 
uh, any of the core so you can select the both the cpus so if you want to learn how to configure this project for the cpu1 and the cpu2 you can check the video whose links is given in the description box so this build is completed now we will resume it by pressing f8 or you can click on this button so it will be running the project on the launch pad so we will open the terminal and we will scan it and we will connect it so once we have connected it we will send the string that is click like share and subscribe so it will sending the SCI UART spline and please like share and subscribe so the another string which you are sending that is thanks for watching the controllers knowledge so it is sending the thanks for watching the controllers knowledge so if you like this kind of the video please comment in the comment sections and uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe the control knowledge thank you thank you very much